to read. I hope everybody's doing well. Okay, turn it just a little bit. There we go. Hi guys, it's nice to see you. <clears throat> so I've been going back and forth because you know we've been discussing this um, the Proudfoot. Well, I keep calling it the Proudfoot case, but it's Sebastian Rogers case. But it's kind of turned into uh, Chris and Katie, right? It's all about Chris and Katie Proudfoot now because they can't seem to tell the truth about a damn thing. And so there's a lot of people that reach out to me on a daily, you know, just kind of spitballing or going over their theories and speculations. And uh, this is one that, that, that's been interesting. I've been communicating back and forth, and I thought maybe we would... Um, oh, Love Laker, Carbalicious, Tara of Hope, it's nice to see you guys. Hello, hello, Sonia, it's nice to see you. I forgot to send this out to you. <laughs> Oops. You might, might want to put it on our Facebook group. I forgot to do that. I was sitting here going through all of this and maybe jump the gun just a little bit. Um, and I was going to go to TikTok first. I'm like, nah, I haven't been on, I haven't been live here at all today. So I figured I'd come live here and then I'd, I'd go on TikTok and, and, and read all this. Hey, Brandy, I hope you're doing well. It's nice to see you. Um, so for this one here, you know, it, this is came from a person and it just said, I just wanted to drop an idea on Sebastian Rogers case. I've watched a lot of YouTube channels and I know a lot of, a uh, lot is opinions, but I've watched a few of the parents. I found it odd that Chris Proudfoot hasn't been home all month. In the beginning, I, I thought someone said he left the night before Sebastian came up missing. Listening to more interviews, it appears that maybe the belt incident was just before he left in February, as it stated he was 15 at the time, which he turned 15 in December, according to his dad. I've heard a few say that Katie and Chris were headed um, towards, towards a divorce, that Chris had told Katie recently that if she had to choose between him and her son, he'd hoped she cho chose her son. Chris has contacted Seth about asking him to flip the living schedule for Sebastian so Sebastian was with Seth during the week and with mom every other weekend because someone needs to work on themselves. Uh, just a thought I throw out there, what I gathered from this. Could this have been a desperate act from Katie to save her marriage? I'm thinking either she staged him going missing to save her marriage or he's somewhere with somebody she... Uh, she took him to uh, but some things I've heard sounds like she's a little out there and perhaps she got rid of him so she could live her life and please Chris I love your channel and, and, and you know thank you whatever and so I, I you know I was thinking about that and I, I thought about her statement and a lot of her statement rings true you know as far as um, his birthday, the belt situation, the fact that Chris hasn't been home for a significant amount of time, you know, could this be a desperate act from, of, of Katie? You know, I, I believe some of this, like in part, some of this, these theories are kind of making me go, hmm, you know, uh, could this be true? Now, I, I just want to be very clear. I don't think anybody would go through all of this with social media, law enforcement, and everything else to hide a kid, okay? There's uh, to me, there's 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 no benefit. You know, like you, if you're going to do something, you would want to benefit. If if the benefit was getting him out of the house, Seth was taking him. So th this idea that some that they just needed to get him out of the house to save the marriage, like Seth was getting him out of the house. Seth was willing to take him anytime, any place. If they wanted to drop him off at Seth's house tomorrow, they would take him, right? Or he would take him. There was no, I mean, he was he was happy that he was getting a son. He was thankful that he was going to be able to enroll his son in school, you know. It, it just, to me, doesn't seem probable. If, if they wanted um, Sebastian out of the house, he was leaving. He was going. So it just seems like there's something else of a motivator there. And that's why I always thought that Chris was home and Chris went into a rage of some sort. And during that rage they he he injured sebastian greatly and i truly believe that katie was there when it happened that's what i believe happened now there's not one bit of scintilla of information corroborating information that i can find to support that theory um and it's just a theory right now and of course as we're getting information that that theory is going to develop 
and it's going to hold water or not hold water. It may partially hold water. It may absolutely not hold any water at all and need to be moved, need, need to refocus and, 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 and look at it again and come up with a new theory. Uh, but right now, that kind of really is my theory. I don't believe Chris wasn't there. There's too many indicators, silent indicators that make that 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 give me the belief that he was there. And it was it's contained in the first, I think, four minutes of Chronicles of Olivia's interview. The very really right out the gate, when she looks at Chris to validate what she did that day as if he was there and he knew what she did. That was to me her corroborating Chris Proudfoot was there that Sunday inside that home. To me. So I was pondering this, and so I wrote back and I said, you know what, I agree with your stuff in part, but see, Katie is the only one that passed her polygraph test, so I don't think she knew anything about, about it, but I think Chris is so devious. Uh, he would have done something horrible behind her back without her knowing about it. Um, my real theory is that it had something to do with the DCS already in their life and the fact that I think something happened that night and Chris, Chris went overboard, uh, knowing that DCS would be called yet again. And I think he went way, way, way overboard, especially if he wasn't supposed to be there or had to stay away for a specific amount of time and just happened to come, uh, come home and something broke off. Um, but sometimes or something has me perplexed, especially with the fact that people state they saw Chris's mother's vehicle near the school that Sebastian's mom says she was driving around looking for. The lady's supposed to be getting the cameras and looking through the footage to see. Again, I don't know, I don't know how much that holds weight. If that was a troll post, uh, I have to put the disclaimer that it, it's possible that it could be a troll post. Um, but uh, again, you know, this is, uh, it, to me, everything is screaming rage. Everything is screaming whatever happened to Sebastian was done in a rage. It wasn't a pre-planned event. It wasn't, um, you know, um, it wasn't coaxing him out of the house. It was, I, I feel like an oh shit factor was involved in this. I feel that both Katie and Chris are so shameful of what they know and what, they, what they've done that it's easier to hide and run away. The reason why they're not out there acting and being around people and searching is because when you're out there in a comfortable environment, you slip up. You say things you're not supposed to say. And while you're walking around with people and you're having conversations with people, it, it you naturally say things um, when you're not when you don't have your guard up. And so a lot the reason why a lot of these parents that have done horrible things won't even go out and search. It's like you you even ask like why don't you go out and at least fake it, right? Try to at least fake it. Make people try to believe. It's because they're so terrified that they're going to slip up and say something to someone, and it's going to put the the, the light right on them as opposed to staying in and saying, hey, law enforcement told me to stay here. He might call. He might come back. I really need to stay at the house. And they pulled that off for a little good minute. But then people were like, hey, uh, you know, Seth is out here looking. Why aren't you guys out here looking? And Chris went off basically saying Seth is trying to make them look bad. I don't understand why Seth would go out of his way to make this family look bad when he's missing a son. It doesn't seem to me he really gives a damn how anybody looks at this point. He doesn't even care how he looks at this point. He just doesn't care. All he cares about is looking under every stone, every rock, every bush, every blade of grass, every grain of sand for his son. And these other people are just giving us BS. And then when people start really going and breathing down their neck and saying, guys, you're you told us the same day you could not go out here and search, that you had to stay home because law enforcement told you not to leave the house. So why are you out at a restaurant eating barbecue when you are told not to leave the house? Well, we got to eat. You're right. And you know what else you got to do? You got to be searching for your son too, but we didn't see you out there doing that. And so when people in this, when this pressure built, what Chris did is he started going to all the talking heads, all the social media. He didn't come to me because I don't have a relationship like that with him. But all the people that he actually went and interviewed with on their channels, like Justin for All, 
I think maybe he might have, I don't know what other channels um, Chris Proud, and maybe Smiley's World, I don't know. Smiley's gonna have to answer for herself. I haven't spoke to her about this. But there was a few other people that reached out to me um, that told me that Chris was reaching out to them to try to find out who took that photo of them at dinner. He was more concerned about, he used more energy. I, I wanna put it in perspective, more energy to hunt somebody down that posted a picture of him and his wife in a restaurant than he did taking time to look for his stepson. He spent more time trying to hunt down somebody that took a photo of him. Like, I, I believe a lot of these things are done on purpose. You know, there are a lot of strategies behind social media. There are a lot of strategies behind social media postings. There's a lot of strategy behind uh, certain things that are being said because we know that we can get people nervous and they, they, they do stupid stuff when they're nervous, when they don't know what to do, when their head's like moving a thousand miles an hour, they don't know what to do. And they start making mistakes and start doing stupid stuff like picking up the phone and calling everybody under the sun to find out where a, a picture came from instead of just going out there, putting your boots on and searching for your kid. It seems like the path of least resistance here is just search for Sebastian. So why are we getting such a resistance from Katie and Chris Proudfoot? Why do they not want to be out there around people? Why do they not want to be seen in the community looking and searching and hunting for their child? Why do they want to be seen in their community as these people that run away when they have a missing child, when people are side-eyeing them? Why are they going on every single channel talking about how um, their image is being uh, obliterate it when they're the ones obliterating their own image. They're not giving, every time I go listen, it's, it's like Don Wells 2.0. Me, 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 I, 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 we, 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 us, us, us. Where's Sebastian in all of their conversations? Every time I see, every time I see Seth on the screen, every time I see him, he's got a shirt with Sebastian's face on it. He's talking on social media. He's talking on mainstream media. But you know what is always present no matter where Seth is or what Seth is talking about? The fact that he says Sebastian's name literally a gajillion times. Can you put that in chat, Sonia, or send it to me privately in chat because you sent it to me by text and I'm, you're, I'm, I'm live streaming on the phone that has text. So in order for me to get it, I need to have it on something else. Let me go and Maybe you guys did put it in chat. Maybe that's why you sent it to me because I wasn't seeing chat. Hold on here. Let me see what's in chat. Oh, my God. Guys, I think we might, um, we might be having some bad breaking news right now, guys. Um, I'd like to get a little more information on this. <sighs> Give me just a second, guys. Do we think this is associated, ladies? Give me just a second, guys. Um. Okay, I don't think it's related. Is it related? Let me get back to her. It's not related to Sebastian, guys, I, 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 but I was seeing if it was related to the other case. So we're, we're monitoring two cases right now, and two of those cases, um, you know, obviously Sebastian Rogers, and then the second case is two ladies from Kansas that went to Oklahoma to pick up um, children for a birthday party, and uh, they their car was found. There was some uh, blood substances either inside the car or outside the car. And it immediately made um, law enforcement uh, say that there is they have suspicion of foul play. The ladies haven't been seen today. Marks one full week since they've been gone. And um, in one of the um, um, Facebook groups, apparently there's a body being pulled from a well in Kansas, um, Oklahoma. 
And it says a body's been pulled from a well in Kansas, uh, comma, Oklahoma, according to Cherokee uh, Nation Marshal. The marshals are working to identify the body, inform family, and et cetera. And this is found, um, uh, Cherokee Nation Marshal, body was found near Highway 412 and Oklahoma Highway 10. The body was pulled from a 20-foot deep well on a farm by a dive team, according to the marshals. Um, but I don't know if that, because it appears it's only one. And so I'm not sure if that is multiple, um, uh, where, where, where that is, or if it's associated with, with it, guys. I'm, I'm really sorry. I can't give you more information. I'm trying to find um, more information about it as we um, are looking a body, body in well. This is breaking about two hours. But the problem is I don't know where this is at. And it's in Kansas, Oklahoma, but I don't know how far away that would be from where the girls disappeared. It's in the girls' chat, but I, for whatever reason, I'm, I'm starting to feel like this might not be connected um, to them. But we'll, we'll find out. Um, there was, you know, a month ago, there was a 19-year-old in Kansas missing, and it doesn't appear they um, ever found him. Um, they hold out hope after three months. So we have other people <clears throat> in Kansas, Oklahoma missing. It sounds like it might be that missing teen um, because that just happened a few months ago right in Kansas, Oklahoma. It, it appears it happened around March 9th. Um, is when this teen um, disappeared. So, wow. Well, that's sad. It sounds like, and this teen's name is, um, I bet you this is who it's gonna be. I bet you. Oh, this is so sad. This is so, so sad. Uh, Delaware County, so Trey Glass. It looks like it might be Trey Glass, if I had to put my money on it, because that appears the only person right now that's, that's missing from the area. Pray glass. We'll say a prayer. Sorry, I haven't been watching chat. Hi, guys. It's nice to see everybody. It's nice to see you with this coming this Saturday. Check your mod chat. Thank you, Pebbles. God bless you. And just a big shout out to all my beautiful mods. They, they, I still have some chocolate covered strawberries with smiley faces on them, and I think I'm, I, I think I'm probably gonna stop. Guys, that tray! Oh my god, <laughs> that tray! The girls got me. It didn't last very long. I literally, I think that was my dinner. I'm pretty sure I had chocolate covered fruit for dinner last night because uh, my neighbor went out. Um, it's Friday night, so he went to the moose. I didn't, I didn't want to go to the moose, um, so he went to the moose and had dinner. And so I didn't get a I didn't get a plate like yesterday. I've been home, so I haven't really been cooking. He's been cooking. He's bringing me over a plate, so I didn't get a plate. So I had all those those fruits, and I ate I ate that whole tray. I took a picture of it, and I sent it to the girls. And I'm like, I I'm I I did some damage. And then this morning I looked at it. I think I woke up at like two o'clock in the morning. It was still laying next to me. I won't lie. <laughs> at like two o'clock this morning, I reach over there and I stuff my face. Well, the chocolate covered fruit. I sure did. I sure did. And you know what? I didn't feel guilty either. You know what I say? I say I dreamed it. If it's a dream, it didn't happen, okay? Nobody can prove I did it. Nobody can prove it. I was here by myself. There's no witnesses. And if there are witnesses, I don't know. You might need to check the backyard. <laughs> I need to stop we'll have every hate channel with their with their shovels digging up my backyard. I know she's got one back here somewhere. <clears throat> Oh, it was so good. It was so good. I have to say my neighbor, when he came over and knocked on it, he's like, what'd, what'd you get? <laughs> he goes, I saw He goes, I saw a van out here. He goes, I'm about to head out for, for some dinner. What, what did you get? And I'm like, what do you mean what I got? He goes, it looked like it was something. It, it looked like it was an edible something. I, I, oh, you, you saw the edible arrangements? He's like, yeah, what'd you get? What'd you get? I said, Glenn, I'm not sharing my edible arrangement with you. And he's like, oh, I didn't want the edible arrangement anyways. He goes, I'm going out for steak and potatoes. <laughs> well, good, because you're not getting my damn chocolate-covered strawberries, 
Uh, what do we have? Pineapple and uh, oh, those apples, those those uh, those green apples. Mm, okay, let's get back to work. Let's get back to work. So it looks like that body uh, might be um, of this of this this tray glass. That's so sad. 19 years old, um, but in a well. Unless he fell in, it's possible. That's a. I guess we'll find out more. So this is just this was just breaking in the last 24 hours. It looks like. Um, they found out about the well. <clears throat> I went out on a real, real small local channel around 13 hours ago and just got uh, picked up a, a couple hours ago by a, a much larger channel. That's kind of how it went. For those that want to know, <clears throat> excuse me with my voice. Um, so what do you guys think? I mean, I guess the question would be, I think the topic of conversation that I'd like to go on on this one is... Um, I guess basically, what do we all, what do you think happened? Do, do we think, let, well, let's, let's break it down for a little bit, a little bit um, smaller. Do we think, we'll do three, listen to this. So answer one's Katie, answer two is Chris, answer three is both. One Katie, two Chris, three both, okay? One Katie, two Chris, three both, okay. Who think do who do you think is is responsible for the disappearance? That's all we know about right now. Sebastian's gone. Okay, we don't know anything. We have no evidence of anything else other than Sebastian is gone. Do we think that he's gone because of mom, stepdad, or both? Oh, wow. So. so, wow, we got quite a few people that say mom. Wow, interesting. So we, I, you know what is really weird with this poll right now? We have threes and ones. I'm kind of shocked we didn't have more twos. Wow, okay. So you guys either think that it, either Katie did it or they both did it. That's interesting. That's interesting. I, I that's why I do these polls, you know? I, I I gotta say that one that one was that one was pretty interesting to me. Um Okay, well now that we know that we it seems like the majority of my audience, well it seems like the majority of my audience thinks that they both did it. But the, the second place that comes under both did it is, is Katie Proudfoot did it. I wasn't, I gotta be honest with you, I wasn't really expecting that. Um, but yeah, I, I, gotta, I gotta say. Okay, and then another question is, is that we heard that, well, let's just break it down, be honest, right? We heard they all three took a polygraph test. We know that that's not true, okay? We all know that's not true. Uh, because of the Nancy Grace interview. I have to be honest with you. I think that um, Chris and Katie were the most truthful on Nancy Grace. And I think that they were the most truthful on Nancy Grace because they knew she most likely had a lot of the answers that she was asking. And that's why they kept their answers so short and sweet. They did, if you notice, when they were on Nancy Grace, they said, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, all that stuff. Very concise, very short, didn't elaborate unless they were asked to elaborate. It almost seemed like they were prepped by an attorney before they actually went on this interview. I will be honest with you because that's kind of the advice that I, I've prepped a lot of uh, people for um, their hearings, you know, for their depositions and stuff like that. And that is one of the things that I always tell them is if they ask you a yes or no question, you give them a yes or no response. They'll let you know if you want to elaborate, keep your, short, keep your, um, your answers very short, concise, and sweet. That is the, um, that is the, you know, what I would have told somebody and I would have been from a law office when I was giving that advice. And that seems like what they said. So I really truly believe they knew or at least had a reason to believe that Nancy Grace had the answers to the questions she was asking. And I think that's why there was that long pause when she asked 
about the polygraph. I think they were they were prepared to lie, but for whatever reason, whether they because they knew that they had people on their panel, that they weren't alone, or something else like that. And so that is when I believe they realized they needed to tell the truth on this polygraph, and that's what that long, uncomfortable pause was while they decided that they were going to make the decision to be honest. And when they were honest, we found out that Katie Proudfoot was the only one that took the polygraph. Now, everybody is saying that Katie not only took the polygraph, but passed the polygraph. But here is one thing that was brought up by the person that I was communicating with, that we read, you know, the, the email here. And it is, how do we know Katie passed the polygraph test? Because really, the only person we've heard that said anybody has passed any polygraph test is Kate, Katie and Chris. And it was predominantly Chris at first until, um, until the Nancy Grace show. And then it was at that point that they decided to then ask about the, um, um, the, whether it was true or not. But who, who's telling us? Who's confirming whether, oh, hey, brown chicken, it's nice to see you, love bug. Cheeky Chops, it's nice to see ya. And everybody else that's in the chat. Wow, we got some people in here, guys. Sorry, I'm on the phone, as you can see, because I'm just having a discussion. I didn't feel like going and setting up the computers and all the equipment and all this other stuff. I just wanted to make it simple and easy. It's trying to, I'm trying to simple and easy my life for a little moment, okay? At least until after the 17th of April, okay? So you guys just got to have to work with me here, right? Work with me here. Um, It's the fact that, who who's telling us that they passed these polygraphs? There's only one. Them. No law enforcement has come out and even told us that they had a polygraph test. The only reason why we know that polygraph tests were even administered is because somebody on a Facebook group decided Chris was open. He was asking, answering questions, and they asked him, "Hey, have you guys taken a polygraph test and have you passed?" And he said multiple times in person, on live streams, as well as post in writing on these Facebook groups that not only did his wife have a polygraph test, but he and Seth both had polygraph tests and all of them um, have been cleared. All of them have passed their lie detector test and all none of them are persons of interest and we need to move on to who, whomever took their son, basically, in a nutshell. Sometimes I just got to remember I got to take a breath. I think I can get, I, I need to be a singer. I think, I honestly think I could get like three full paragraphs out in, in one lung. Sussy Baker. <laughs> I don't know why that's funny for you, Gray, but there you go. <laughs> Happy to help you out. I know, take deep breaths. It's a lot. It's a lot, you know? It really is. And it just, but it's upsetting for me because it's like, I, I hate, I I think I, I think what it is for some of us is feeling duped. Does that make sense? Like, especially for me, because, you know, when I first looked at this case, for all the people that follow me regularly, you know that my immediate reaction was kind of, it wasn't the, oh, it's a 15-year-old boy that ran away from home this is a dime a dozen, you know? I mean, I'm, I'm saying that, you know, in reality, this story is a dime a dozen, but there's a reason why that I, it, it, I, I have, it pa didn't pass the Bullhorn Betty sn sniff test, right? I don't know why I have a sniff test that I don't even know about, but apparently I do. I naturally, organically, because when I read something, I'm like my 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 ears go up, and I'm like, ah, wait a minute, er, 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 er. what's this? This doesn't look right, right? This doesn't look right. You guys know I don't cover too many teens, so for me to cover a teen, especially this early on in a case, there's some major major red flags that I personally see myself that are are perplexing. And so when I first came into this case, I thought, you know, and of course, everybody says I'm too rough, right? So I think, you know, I do, I do listen a little bit. Okay, don't tell anybody. I got a, you know, nasty reputation to uphold, but every occasionally I do listen. So I thought maybe I'm just being a little too mean. So I'm like, okay, you know, let's just, there's nothing here. You know, I go back and, and I even broke it down for you why I'm backing off. Like if we had to look at this, you know, um, 
realistically, you know, this video of these lights, you know, if they didn't circle them and say suspect one, suspect two, is it really, you know, we really don't have anything to really say. We have our gut feelings. Remember me going over the, like, like two or three or four days in a row talking about our gut feelings and how we should, we should dismiss these gut feelings because they're just feelings. It doesn't, feelings don't equal facts. <laughs> Remember those conversations? So, well, those feelings do kind of, do kind of, you know, make facts as we all do know, but you know, we got to go, we got to roll with it. You know, we got to see how things play out. People knew that this stunk to high heaven, but then the behavior panel came out and it just threw, I think it, it threw me for a loop. And I, and that's when I'm like, well, you know, maybe I'm just got this wrong. Maybe I'm just, I'm too stressed out. Maybe I just got too much on my plate. Maybe I'm not analyzing. Oh, thank you, Darcy. Thank you. God bless you. Maybe I'm not analyzing this right. You know, I'm just, spitballing here you know and i'm thinking okay i gotta have it wrong i gotta have it wrong but then it's like man these parents this parent these parents attitude sucks how 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 is this okay <laughs> really the behavior panel thinks they're innocent i, I don't get it i don't get it I'm, I'm seriously doubting my mental health at this point okay i know a lot of people have already done that trust me i'm a mentally stable healthy individual okay uh, you know, I'm a normal person, okay? Let me say that again. If I say it 15 times, I'll believe it myself, damn it. No, I'm just joking. But I really was going bonkers. I'm like, how is people thinking that this is okay? This is not normal behavior. This is not good behavior. We look at all these people from Brandy to, 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 to Sebastian, not Sebastian's mom, to Riley's mom, to all these people. Look at Paula Miranda's family. They, they still do search parties. Look at Elijah Vu's family. Still doing search parties months after the, that child disappeared. And you look over at the Proudfoots and they're like, uh, uh, well, you know, I don't know why everybody's being so mean to us, you know? Uh, we're just doing what we're told to do. Really? What are you told to do? Well, we're told to sit here. But you're not sitting home. You're going everywhere else, just not looking for your son. And that's what the rest of us see. We're seeing them go everywhere else and find every excuse they can find not to go out and look, not to be out there with the people looking for their son. They're not even showing that they, they're not even showing the community that they even give a damn about this boy. And then we hear all this crap from Chris about how he basically hated this boy. And then, and, and, and Katie is just literally standing by this piece of shit that put her son through all of this. And she just happily goes right along with whatever he's doing. Baby, you own the house. Do you want to understand that? Your name is in first position. This, this, this D ain't worth it, honey. It ain't worth it. I don't know any D that's worth it, to be honest with you. If you want my truth. Keep up hearing a lot of new things happening to Sebastian under Katie's watch. The SA, the, SA, the belt whipping, the, the fact that CPS was called out there and she didn't immediately call uh, Seth to tell him what was going on. There's a lot. There's, there's so much that we just don't know. And you know what? Every time Seth tries to bring it up, you get Chris calling him up with Katie on the phone right there in tow saying, if you keep talking like this, nobody's going to help you search. Well, honey, let me tell you something. Not only are they out there searching right now and putting flyers up, and we know that Seth needs a break and he's getting a break, but right behind that, honey, I'm going to be bringing another wind in, okay? Right about April 20th. Right when you think you're, you're you're doing okay and you can sit back and 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 peace out, that's when that's when you're gonna be getting that knock. Right when you think everything is, whew, right. Let's take a breather. Let's take a breather. She learn. She learns. Do some research. Do some research. That's all I gotta say. Hey, Betty, good job. He needs to be found, definitely. I'll do a, a reading on Katie today. Yeah, you know, because to be honest with you, it, I, I'd like to know a few things because this is the situation at hand. So Katie's basically put herself in a box, right? Um, she's basically painted Chris out of the picture completely. And her son disappeared while she was the only person home. 
So that's why I, I when when she said she passed the um, the polygraph test, that's when kind of my theory started changing, and I started thinking about Chris. And there was a there was a story uh, that I read, and it was I think it was on TikTok, and it, maybe it wasn't reading, it was watching, and it was a story um, about uh, something. Maybe it was YouTube. I don't remember. And it was a guy that was military trained, and he was able to get inside this house. And literally get all the bad guys. And there was something about it. And they said, well, how were you able to get in? And he said, he said something like he, he was in the mil. I can't remember, but he was in the military. They teach you, I mean, even something that people don't even think. They teach you how to walk in your boots without making a noise. Did you know that? I didn't know that. They teach their military to walk in their boots so they don't make any noise, so they can sneak up on people. I had no earthly idea they had those types of training in military. I mean, you would think you should know that, right? Duh. But you don't think about stuff. You don't think about stupid stuff like that, about how, how walking impacts a mission. It does. It does. So that's why you see them, you see them walk so so specifically, so when I found out that Katie passed her polygraph test, but she was the only one that appeared to be in the house, then I started thinking, you know, if Chris is this sneaky, like we have to take Nina's um, statement and testimony, what her life was, and we have to apply that in here. And she talked about a very manipulative man that coaxed her from one state to another to take her child away from her. How manipulative, how much he had to play a specific role, how convincing this man needed to be to bring a woman from a different state over here so he could take her child so he didn't have to pay child support. Not that she was a bad mother, not that she was a horrible mother, not that she was not going to take very good care of that kid because he did not want to pay child support to her because he deemed her the gold digger. So he wanted a child he didn't even want to have living with him so he didn't have to pay $1 to that gold digging bitch. I don't think she's a gold digging bitch, okay? <laughs> that was Chris Proudfoot coming out. I just wanna let you know. That's how, I, I guarantee that's what he was saying, okay? I don't want people clicking and saying, can you believe Betty? That, that's not what I, I love Nina. God knows I love Nina, that poor woman. But you could hear that rolling right off his tongue, couldn't you? So if you have a man that, that is that, that manipulative, that convincing, uh, that, um, you know, per, getting a strategy, the planning of it, the strategic and the strategy, the execution of that strategy and doing it like seamlessly, he did. So if he can do that with a woman smiling in her face, coaxing her into a different state, convincing her that what makes you think that he can't go on a camera and do the same thing to the rest of the world? Because that's what I, I truly believe. I believe that this guy is that manipulative that he could look at his wife in her face knowing that he took his her, her son out without her even knowing about it. He looks that kind of person. He looks that evil to me now. He didn't once upon a time. But as things keep coming out, I see the monster that Chris Proudfoot truly is. And shame on Katie for standing by her man. Because at the end of all of this, I hope she sits right next to him. She enabled him. She knew what he was doing to her son. She knew how, she, how he treated her son. And she let this go on for year after year after year after year this didn't his his disdain for this boy didn't just happen it just bursted that's the difference what we're seeing here i guarantee is something being bottled inside of chris until it absolutely erupted because that's the kind of man he seems to be and I believe when he erupted, he erupted on Sebastian. Now, he may have planned this because I've got two theories and one involves Katie and one does not. So that's kind of where I'm at. Finding Veronica and 
Oh, yeah, we have Finding Veronica and Jilly on Facebook uh, group. If you guys would like to go there, this is the two beautiful ladies that went to go pick up the kids. Guys, this is really, really sad. It's really, really bad. I'm very, very scared for them. Um, this is a preacher's wife. Um, these were two ladies going to collect kids to go to a birthday party. You know, I have read some things that make me concerned very 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 concerned and i can tell you wrangler's mama she don't want a piece of me and i absolutely believe she's absolutely 100 percent behind all of this for the record that's my opinion i believe that woman is evil and i believe something happened and i believe she i saw some of the the writing some of the the stuff she put in her court here court paperwork just to get those kids and I'm like, you know what? There's no evidence of any of this. There's nothing substantiating any of this. And I've been around the block and in the court systems enough to know a play when I see it. And that lady, that grandmother, she's got, she's got problems. She's got problems. And um, there's something, there's something. But believe, believe this, grandma's behind it. I, I, don't, I don't know who else is in it with her. But whatever's going on, grandma's behind it. That's something I know. Grandma's behind it. They can beat me up. They can come to my channel. They can say whatever they want to say. They don't scare me. They don't scare me. Um, but grandma did it. Behind it something. Grandma, knock, knock. I'm Bullhorn Betty. Nice to see you. Um, so that's really it. That's all I have. But look into it. If you guys get some information, drop it. We've got several. Drop it on, um, you know, we also have Bullhorn Betty True Crime. If you guys have any leads on cases or anything like that, uh, drop it there. We are always monitoring that page. If it's super, super huge, my mods will send it to me. You can always send me tips to bullhornbetty at gmail.com. And you guys know my um, um, phone number on the show. You guys can drop uh text messages there. I don't get them. Don't send me breaking stuff on my text messages because it'll be days or weeks before I see it. The best way is if you have breaking information or need me to see it, to reach out to me at bullhornbetty at gmail.com. There's no easier way to do it than that, okay? If it takes me days to get back to you, it just takes me days to get back to you. The email gets full and uh, it's me. I don't let anybody else in my emails. So when you send me an email, it goes to, directly to me. It's read by me. There's no third person here that ever reads it. So even if you have something confidential you need to send me and you're not sure, there you go. Everything that's confidential stays confidential. It stays in my vault. Uh, it stays with me. And I don't break confidentiality unless there's a court order. So uh, <laughs> just to let you know how I roll. So you have nothing to worry about. And I'm not required to release or state my sources at all and they better have good cause to drive me to court to make me do so so you don't ever have to worry about me um so if you want to send me some confidential stuff send me some confidential stuff i'm ready to listen i want to find out information about both of these cases about sebastian rogers about uh veronica butler and jillian uh kelly we need to help we need to get leads the the ones that worry me the most is the 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 jillian kelly and because it's so desolate out there, you know, and, but the, but the, you know, in, in the same sense, it is so desolate out there, but I believe the cops, if, if I've got as much information that I have, there is no way that the cops don't have what they have. Okay. There's just, there's just, there's no way, there's no way unless they ain't doing their damn job. And I don't see that happening with the FBI involved. So if I've got what I've got, I can tell you they have a treasure, a treasure trove. That's what I know. So I truly believe these girls will be found. I truly believe it's a matter of time. I truly believe those people that are responsible for their disappearance will be brought to justice and they will be brought to justice swift, swiftly. I think right now law enforcement has to work within their confines and their confines require evidence. Uh, it doesn't mean that they don't have a good sight on who is doing it. It means that they need to build now the uh, from point A to point B to get that um, probable cause affidavit and get those search warrants. I think it's underway now. I think they have an, a massive amount of information. And I don't think we're going to be shocked whatsoever when we find out who's arrested for this crime. And I'll leave it at that. But we still want information coming in on that, that Facebook group. We want to build that Facebook group up. I'm going to change it over to a private group. 
um, but I'm not ready to do that just quite yet because I'm, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that channel um, just yet. Right now it's being designated for um, the girls, but it's not, it's obviously going to be repurposed once that story uh, is going by the wayside. So you guys do a great job uh, each and every day coming here and advocating for these cases and getting the information out there. So please continue to do so. Um, again, I wish I was out there looking for Sebastian. We're going to be getting rolling into town in Tennessee on the 21st. It is now a confirmed um, trip. So I will be in, and I'm going to be there for a significant amount of time, probably one to two weeks um, in the area because we have so many cases to cover in Tennessee. But I'm going to give the uh, full, a solid full week to Sebastian Rogers. And then the, the next week will be uh, divvied up between uh, Summer Wells, Holland Snap, and Layla Santanello. And we'll get out there. I mean, I, I think I'm going to, um, you know, Layla Santanello, we've gotten away from just a little bit. There was some stuff going on, um, and I wanted to let that play out before we, I wanted to see where everything was going to fall, you know, with the arrest of Michael and stuff like that. And now that we have the arrest of Michael, and I was hopeful that we would get more news about Layla Santanello. So I was just... I didn't stop working the case. I just wanted to let the let the stuff work the way it was going to work. And now we're months after his arrest, and it's time now to you know obviously they didn't get anything that led to Layla Santanello's findings. So we need to get back out there and we need to figure out what we're going to do. I'm also talking to a few creators about protesting TBI. Um, I know this is not a conversation that we want. We all do love TBI. We, we know how hard they work. Um, but we're starting to have problems with, with, with some of our cases. And um, it seems to me that in the state of Tennessee, if we have no body, nobody gets in trouble. They don't even try to find any other charges to charge the people with. They don't try to get the bad guys off, off the streets. Um, kids are dying there and all their parents have to do is dispose of them in the right way where they can't be found and their, fr their families get to live their lives without any consequences for the rest of their life why this child didn't even get a, a marker or a proper burial. I'm getting so sick and tired of seeing that over and over coming from one state and one state specifically, and that's the state of Tennessee. And so we do want to air our frustration. We do want to, I don't know when this is gonna be, it's in the emphasis um, starts of it. Um, but I was approached, so that means the conversations were had long before I was approached. And um, they were asking if I would be willing to participate. And of course, my answer is absolutely, without a doubt, yes, I'm happy to participate. Um, so that is coming up. It, I don't know when. I don't know how many people are going to be involved. I don't know how it's how it's growing, how, it, how whatever, whatever. But it, you know, it all starts with the planting of a seed, and I have to say the seed was planted. So it's only a matter of time before we're going to collectively um, roll up on TBI and um, let them know we're starting to get concerned for the children in the state of Tennessee and the fact that there's so many cases unsolved and parents unchecked and people being able to live their life at the expense of these children never being found again. And it's getting disgusting, it's getting grotesque, and we need to take a stand for our children out there in Tennessee, and we need to take a stand hard. Um, this is going to be above board. We'll we'll do whatever needs to be done to, uh, if they were going to require us to have a permit to be in front of TBI building, we'll have a permit. You guys know I do not believe in permits. Uh, but whatever we need to do to make this as big and as impactful as possible so TBI hears us, uh, that's what I'm willing to do. So we'll uh, figure it out. It's not something that's going to be happening tomorrow. Just be in the back of your mind. Know that there are people behind the scenes that are really trying uh, we're trying to figure out how to, to make, to get this stuff, get action, to get these cases solved, to get people uh, out there and, and wanting to do better, wanting to do better work, wanting to, you know, maybe go back and, and look at these cold cases, open these books back up, get some fresh eyes on them. Let's do something. It's not just about one individual person. It's about all of them. They need help. They need our help. Um, you know, Tennessee needs to know we're sick and tired of the excuses. They need to start hiring enough law enforcement to do their job and to do their job well. Right now, you have a political problem in Tennessee that's hindering these cases. 
And that is exactly what it is. You have a political problem in Tennessee that is hindering these cases. So you guys need to vote smarter, be wiser. If people aren't talking about how to get law enforcement, better law enforcement, more law enforcement in their outfits, you do not want to be voting on them because this is the result of defunding police right here. This nonsense right here. And I've been saying it since the day we started covering the Summer Wells case. It's only going to get uglier. We need to be funding the shit. And I say that again, the shit out of our law enforcement across this country. It is not getting better. And we got a wide open border. Y'all need to start thinking wiser. So anyways, I love you guys. Take care. That's all the updates I have. I don't really have much. It's wonderful Saturday though. You know, it's just, I wish I was reading. I wasn't reading such crummy crap on a Saturday. So I think I'm going to, I don't know, eat the rest of my chocolate covered fruit. And I don't know. I want to kind of, I want to go to a smash house. <laughs> I won't lie to you. I want to go to a smash house, but I need to wait until I get some wheels so I can, you know, drive there to go smash something up. But I think I'm ready to smash something. So, you know, guidance, you know, you got those, those twins. Maybe me and you can uh, go have a date. Now, I want to tell you, I don't sleep with a chick on the first date. Okay, babe. All right. But I think me and you could both use a, a baseball bat and a few things to smash. I'm just saying. I'm just saying, guidance. I don't know. You're close to me. It seems like it, it's a match made in heaven. I'm just saying. Have a great rest of the weekend, y'all. I know, I know. I love you guys. You guys be great. Have a great day. Go out there and watch Sebastian support his family. In about another hour and a half, it looks like they're going to have the vigil for him. I wish I could be there. It's been upsetting me so much. If you don't believe me, ask my mods. I have been heavily upset over the car situation as well as not being able to go to Riley Strain or Sebastian's case. And then, you know, by the time I get it back, it's too late. I got to get prepared for my uh, court hearing that I'm having on the 17th. And then so when I get back on the 18th, I'm going to need a day or two just to, you know, take a breath because I've been rolling strong for freaking nine months, 10 months. You know, it's been pretty shitty. But um, either way, I just going to take a day or two and then we'll get back at it. And, I, and the first thing I'll do is I'll pack up a bag and start heading to Tennessee. So I plan to arrive in Tennessee on the 21st. I don't know what part of Tennessee I'm going to start with, um, but I will be in Tennessee and we will be out there in Tennessee for two solid weeks. Two weeks, rain or shine. You guys are going to be waking up with me and you're going to be going to bed with me, okay? But you ain't going to be showering with me, so don't get any funny ideas, you guys. And I'm talking to the guys. I see you back there. All right, guys, I'll talk to you later. I love you. God bless. Make it a great day and we'll see you soon.